G'day everyone on our first firearms dedicated episode. That's that's what it is. It is a firearms dedicated episode, Jack, yes. And so, as many of you know, firearms are tools of the trade for us. It's something that we carry with us all the time and we use. So, Ants purchased himself a lovely new rifle and we're going to set it up to be a little bit more station ready. <laughs> A lot of the rifles I have have wood on, wood on them, but I originally had a full synthetic rifle, which is currently out of service because of the amount of work it's done. And what I like about those systems is modifications you can make to them, but also the fact that you can start using standard sort of magazines, which means that you can carry more ammo ready to go. So today we're going to be taking the new Tika T3X and changing it from a three round detachable magazine to a 10 round detachable magazine, which means that Ant will be able to have plenty of ammo to start throwing down range at camels as he needs to. So here we are. Here we are. Yes, it's, uh, and thanks to the guys at um, Kalgoorlie, free range supplies are really helpful. Um, so thank you to them. And it's got, did a bit of research on it. Um, Tika it seems like a you know quite a um, reputable brand. It's from Finland. Yes. Part of uh, Seiko. Is it? Seiko Group. Yeah. yeah. So Seiko are renowned as very, very good firearms. Yeah. Tika is probably the next level down. It's like they're well, in this range. Yeah. There's a whole load of things which you can spend a lot of money on, but for affordability, durability, and work, these things do the job. Yeah because in West Australia, we are highly restricted as to what firearms we're allowed to have. And that includes some arbitrary appearance laws. Yep. Because we know that anything that puts a bullet out can be dangerous. Yes, indeed. And this is the T3X Varmint Hunter. Varmint, like, and we've got plenty of varmints out here, Jack. So it well, seemed so appropriate. Prairie, prairie dogs? Prairie. <laughs> now, what a varmint, for those who aren't, fully involved in firearms, uh, you know, would understand, is it's a slightly heavier barrel, which means that it's designed for more prolonged shooting. Whereas if you have a hunter or a hunter weight barrel, they are lighter and they are for two or three shots in a session. And that's usually for something like deer season. So firearms that we prefer out here are varmint because of the amount of use they'll have or a bull barrel, which is heavier. Now it's not so Typical in a hunting rifle would have a heavy bull barrel, but in something for longer ranges or sustained rate of fire, the heavier barrel, and that's where you step into going fluted or anything else for heat dissipation, because with the heat changes where the rounds go, but we want to stay on target for you know 20 to 30 rounds in a short amount of time. We're going to disassemble this. We're going to take it apart, take the chassis chassis off. Yep. Change out the chassis so we can fit in a 10 round mag. And um, we have one prepared previously. Yeah, and that's from Australian Tactical Precision. We will go through that again. But one of the main things that we're going to be doing is to preserve this nice woodwork because Seiko are renowned for nice woodwork we're going to be taking this wooden stock or chassis off and replacing it with this MDT LSS, which is a Gen 2, which you'll see it's quite light compared to the wood. And it's got M-lock rails, which means that we can put Picatinny rails onto the side of it or mount any accessories onto it that we desire. So, this is how it comes. So there's a few things that we need to do. One is to add a stock adapter, which is a buffer tube. So for anyone who's familiar with the Armalite platform, this is a buffer tube, which is where usually you have a spring for your recoil and your self-loading system. We need to put that on there, but we also need to put a pistol grip, which is out to your left hand. So I've got a, a Magpul pistol grip that we're going to be putting onto there. And we've got a FAB stock, 
So this is FAB. So it's from Israel. It's a nice stock. It's got a bit of a, a uh, platform on your shoulder, which you know, we like. And we've gone for this because it's what we had on hand. And you can also put a cheek riser on it quite easily. So that will be going on. Onto here. And we've got a Barris full field, which is actually off one of my other rifles, the rifle that's currently in getting repaired. So Ant can see if he likes this optic. It's been very reliable. And we're also going to be putting on an Australian made Picatinny rail so we can change the optics easily. So just on the rails, Jack, there's two main types? Well, you've got a Weaver, which is an older type, and a Picatinny, which okay. is called Picatinny 1913, but it's not actually from 1913. Okay. So that rail system was designed to be modular in style so that you can change accessories like torches, different optics for different rolls. Okay, so this is more of a versatile Assisting. And also you can, you can you, you know, with the placement distance from your eye socket and all that, you can move it. Yeah. Yep. And with the other one you mentioned, what's it, is that a bit more limited or what, what the, would you choose? Why would you choose a Picatinny versus a... For interchangeability okay. is why you go for a Picatinny. So it's for, you know, call it task specific. Yep. You can use the same flat form and change things yep. out. So if we wanted to, we can have this optic. We can then change it down to like a red dot aim point whatever and then having the m lock series it's lighter than a picatinny but we can put picatinny on here for specific things like if you wanted that angled grip yep or a yeah, yeah. foregrip or torch or yeah. night op night aiming device on the side very good so we've got a clear rifle in front of us we just need to stop think no magazine before we start pulling it apart Right yeah, where you go, Jack. You keep you keep going, mate. All right. Now, one of the things about changing out the magazine is that we've got these smaller magazines. They are a poly mag, but they can only take three rounds, which, when you're dealing with camels, isn't great. And we've got three different types of ten round magazine here and we will go through the different brands and which ones I prefer. These three are the same type which is the Accuracy International Chassis System so AICS and that's from the brand Accuracy International so they made a standard. So before we really get into play we're going to remove our bolt and we are clear all the way. Clear. So the standard Tika comes with its own bolts, but the MDT chassis comes with new bolts to put into it. So we're on a nice table, it's a nice rifle. Before we put the Picatinny on, we're going to be taking everything off this rifle. And it looks like we need some hex head pieces. Five piece or bit. Done. Just like that, Jack. Just like that, Ant. Now, you can get a kit, which is just changing this out. But what we wanted to do is lose a little bit of weight. And with that, we would be gaining the protecting this nice woodwork. Yeah. So that's the old chassis. That's our screws. Now, they are a length for your chassis. So if you didn't have them, you'd have to modify them for your length for what you want to achieve. And now this is our new one. So have a go at the weight difference between these. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. And no, you've got to grab him on the top because there's a nut there. Plastic for transport nut. Now, we will save these for going onto those ones. So that's our front one. Mm -hmm. Here's our rear one. 
these a lot longer. Right, so you got your bedding block there, which is at the front of your breech. And so this will just slip on. And some people will argue about whether you put Loctite or not. You do them up, torque them to spec, do yep. it up in inch pounds. As opposed to? Foot pounds. That ant mm -hmm. would be us. And where's, where's who, who was the group that you said, Jack? Australian Tactical Precision, ATP. Yeah, and yeah. so for all the parts, uh, you order, uh, you just order on, online there, and but they're good, right? So they check, you know, before they send anything to you, they want to see the firearms license, they want to... Make sure so, that you are legit. Yeah. And they won't send you anything unless you got your, unless you can show proof of a firearms license and so on and so forth, which is good. So the whole process applying for a firearms license here in WA probably took me till the final ten weeks. Yeah, yeah, ten weeks. So you basically you go in to the firearms store. What I found really interesting is that you've got a oh. per. That's annoying. No good. It doesn't fit. Well. No. You are. Different. No, you're not different. It's just we're going to have to cut the um, beaver tail off it. Oh. It's not a huge issue. Oh, don't wreck it, Jack. What? Okay. These things are a dime a dozen, Ant. Okay. Yeah. You just order another one. Anyway, it's one of mine, so <laughs> why are you complaining? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but is it then going to shift when you... Because then it won't be... No, no. I just didn't read on the order spec okay. that you couldn't use one with a beaver tail. Yeah, so with the, with the firearms, I took about 10 weeks. So the process is interesting. So you, you go to the firearms store, wherever that might be, and you have to do a... a a firearm safety test. This is here in WA. A firearm safety test. Awareness. Firearms awareness test. Okay. And you do that in the store. Yep. Uh, about 20, 23 questions or whatever. Common, a lot of it's common sense if you're familiar with firearms. Uh, and then you have to get a police clearance. Um, and then there was one other thing you had to do. Anyhow, you, you put that in and then you have to buy the firearm. So you actually, pay... you have to buy the firearm before you can apply for it. Right. So you have to buy the firearm, you pay 50% deposit or whatever, and then you go through the process of, okay, doing your test, getting your police clearance, all these sorts of, you know, all the paperwork. You put that in. And then you've got to give the reasons for why, once you pass the test, then you've got to put in the reason why you, why a, you should have... A genuine need. A genuine need. And so for here, the genuine need was... Recreational shooting of feral animals. Recreational shooting of feral animals. And the next question they ask is, and they were good, like the police were very good. So they, they would send emails, they're very responsive, and... If I didn't respond to an email, they would call. Uh, so I like that. You know, I like the fact that they're diligent and they follow up, and especially when it comes to firearms. And so they said, look, we need more uh, justification for your firearms application on why you need a 308 calibre. Because it's not just firearms licence, you know, as Jack says, it's got to be fit for purpose. So then the the you know the 308. You need you need a proper reason why you need such a big calibre. And the reason we gave was well, what, actually, a, a 308 is a medium sized calibre. Yeah. So what was the reason that we gave? Well, it's to provide ethical kills and control on feral animals such as 
the camels, all the horses. Yeah. Wash him. Oh, this is going to be another 20 minutes and I'm done. An hour. Can I please have the castle nut? Yes. Oh, it's, I, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful, mate. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you got the bees. And we swapped hatches here. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. So what is very thoughtful of them is that they've put a small Allen key down the bottom for locking the position of your buffer tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, we've got a castle nut there as well. This is the castle nut tool and all these others. Is this a fit for purpose? Yeah, that's for a specific rifle. Right, okay. We so aren't allowed right. here in WA. <laughs> It's what? It's one we're not allowed in WA. Okay, we'll put that over there, Jack. Well, no, we're allowed the tool. You're just not allowed to have a bloody AR, which is madness. I mean, you look at the, the groups of camels we come across, and if you're using a semi-auto, or what they say is looks like a semi-auto, um, you would tidy up a lot of them. Yeah. So then they asked for clarification on that. So... We gave them the reason because, for the, you know, for the humane killing of culling, humane culling of uh, Can I borrow the tool? Yep, large animals, uh, and so yeah, then then that part was accepted. So then what happens is it's about there's a 28 day cooling off period or something, Jack. What, yep. From the time you put in the application, or um, yep. they have started playing games with that. Okay. But, in effect, yeah. There's a 28 day. You've got a 28 day cooling off period. Right. So then, okay, so now, so now you've, got, you've got past that point. So you've done your police clearance, you've done your, fire, you've done your awareness, firearms awareness test, you've, you've bought your weapon, well, part of it, and they said, and the police agree that, yep, for the reasons given, you can have that weapon. Then they need a pitch to show that you have a safe. Yeah, a Form 22. A Form 22. Yes. And the Form 22, they're very specific about the bolts that you need, the, the fixings to the, the floor and the wall. Size and of the washers. Size, size of the washers, size of the bolts. I mean, it is, you know, and it's, it's good. It's good they're specific. So yes, we provided evidence of that and then Ten weeks later, you get your you get your license. So, and the license they give you is for this particular firearm. So, if you have a few firearms like you do, Jack, you need a license for every single firearm. Yep. And so then you go back to the shop and you show them that you, because it gets sent here in the mail, that you have a firearms license for a T3, a Tika T3X. With your designated serial number. With my designated serial number on it. Can you pass yes. the Picatinny? Um, you do that, and then uh, and then you can you can take away your uh, your firearm and pay for the balance, of course. So that's the process. Oh, the other thing I forgot is that you you need a what's it called, Jack? A serviceability certificate. No, 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 no. The, the, the landowner's thing. What's that? Oh, a property letter. A property letter. Yeah, which it, is it, someone authorising you or saying that you are authorised to. Use firearms on their property. Yep. Right. So I've written my own property letter multiple times. So The most interesting question on there is how long have you known this person for? <laughs> and they've never questioned me about the varying dates. <laughs> As, as far, as long as you can remember. <laughs> well, no, no, because you get into a really, like, philosophical debate. Okay. Because at what point do you truly know oneself? Oh. But then there's also the point at which the first oh. connection's in your brain. So, effectively, yes. the first memory that you have... Yes. ...is the day that your brain 
made yeah. the connection between your hypothalamus and frontal cortex? If I said I can't remember that day... <laughs> <laughs> we might have a problem. <laughs> I'm going to need to get a different screwdriver because those are soft. Oh, the. Uh... Do we have the little blue kit? Yeah, we do. Oh, here you go, Jack. Use these. I've got my Stanley set here. This will work. Here, mate. Oh, yeah, your glasses repair one. Yep. Glasses and gats. Glasses and gats. There we go. And is the property letter thing, is that only in WA or is that Australia-wide? Uh, WA has... Oh, the plastic ant. That's why they're breaking. Come on, Tika, lift your game. Do we use those again? Pretty much never again. And, of, and with the firearms licence, Jack, like, where is, like... It, it's a state. Well, so WA doesn't recognise other states' firearms licences. Okay. Yep. And uh, most firearms licence procedures and guidelines or no. rules the same? No, there is no actual national firearms agreement. There was one proposed in 1996 after the Port Arthur mm -hmm. massacre. Yeah, I remember it well. Um, and, yeah, they all said, yeah, 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 but then they decided, no, they don't want to have universal laws in this country. So this is a um, bedding block, this little bit of metal, and he goes in the front, so you've got these two screws yep. that align. Yep. And so he goes into that hole there. Got it. Well, it should go into that hole there. Why are you not going there? Fits in the top, Ant. There we are. Beautiful. So I was married on January of 1996 and for our honeymoon, Jack, mm. we went to Tasmania. Oh, fuck's sake, Ant. And let's not start the conspiracies now. No, no, no. <laughs> Went to Tasmania, and we did a we did a lap around Tasmania, and we went to Port Arthur. And I remember, and we did all the tours and that. And then Nikki, uh, Nick, uh, she wasn't feeling well, so she stayed in the cafeteria while I went out on some boat around. It's a fascinating place, Port Arthur. It's a penal colony for those international uh, people. Um, and anyhow, I came back and you know we, we carried on. Now, I can't remember if it was a year later or several months later or whatever it was, and that, that horrendous shooting occurred. And the people that were shot were all the, the tour guides that had just taken us around. Mm. And Nick was sitting in that cafe, and I just we just thought, Gee whiz, if we were a, you know, a year later or a couple of months later. It's months, Ant, it'll be months. Months, yeah, because it's just amazing. It was in 96. Yeah. And so the, the great, the, one of the great stories there, which will be, which would be hard, which, which would be hard for our US friends. To, oh, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to. Actually. To understand, but not understand, but to, to come to grips with, but. It was very amazing that the Prime Minister just said, look, th this guy went down there and slaughtered, I don't know, with semi-automatic weapons. 36 weapon. people? 36 people, right. He, he actually held the world record. Right. Until uh, another Australian did it in New Zealand. Right, OK. But the, so anyhow, so the Prime Minister comes out and says, OK, we're not going to have semi-automatic weapons. So he, he just goes, all those that have got semi-automatic weapons, you can't have them anymore, come and hand them in. And the Australians went... All oh, right. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, hand them all in. <laughs> now, I know that wouldn't happen in a lot of countries. So when Jack's talking about when the, the, uh, the firearms stop, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the reason.
That's that's one of those topics at a dinner table that just it it, polarizes. It, it just polarizes, and yeah. and the debate just, just roars on. Roars on. Um, so I'm sure there'll be some comments on it. Firearms out here are an essential, uh, are a necessity, and we would be much more effective, and it would be a lot. Uh, more beneficial for the ferals uh, if 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 we still had semi-automatics, um, but it's not the case. And so, in Western Australia, everything is manual. just manual. Uh, bolt action, bolt re actions. repeaters, yeah, pump action, blah blah blah. Yeah, but there's no really good pump actions available in 308 and WA because all the good ones look scary. And yeah. Do you know what's scary? Tell me. Police who wear black uniforms, not khaki. Is this one of your... Is this a... Is this a... Is this no, a, it's not a conspiracy. Okay, why, 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 okay, why, why is it... It's scary because they wear black. Yeah, why do the police need to wear black? How, like, oppressive is that? They should wear pink. Well, how about they go back to khaki? Oh, yeah, like the days of Skippy. Yeah. How good was that? That was good. You used to Skippy know. Skippy the you... bush kangaroo. What was the kid's name? Uh, Jerry was the helicopter pilot. Jerry. Um, Matt. Who was the, what, oh, what was the kid's name? What's that, Skip? Oh, Jimmy's falling down the well. What, he's broken his leg? <laughs> he hasn't had any water for three days. I tell you, that was a pretty smart kangaroo. It's a bit like Flipper. Flipper the dolphin, that was a pretty smart dolphin. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. And just with scopes, Jack, what's, what scopes is? This is a Burris Full Field E1, I believe it is. Okay. Now, and I've had this for quite a long time, actually. And, and the, the difference in the scope, sco you know, like Le 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 Leopold. Leopold. Le Leopold, yeah. Leopold. They're, Loopy. Yeah, look, they're considered they, they are quality. good. But they've let themselves down in the last couple of years. Okay. So unless you're buying something like the Mark IV, which is once you get into your match and military grade ones, um, which is thousands and thousands of dollars worth, um, oh, let's bring that in tight. Yeah, probably bring it back. So position four. Far out there. Do you, do you want to put a vertigrip on this or are you happy with it as is? What's a vertigrip? Um, in the box there. Yeah. Oh, I, li I like that. And uh, I'd love that. Around, have that on there and that gives you Yeah, the... I'd love that. So you want angle grip or a f full... No, no, angle. angle. Like that, yep. All right. Uh, sorry, I should let you have a look through yeah, that. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> yeah, I like that, Jack. Now this is going to be a little bit awkward in the whole sitting down position, but we've gone from the standard one. Now what we've got is a MDT, so it's one of the same brand as this chassis, and we're just going to check. There's nothing in the mag. She locks in there all right. Now your mag release is just mm. at the front here, so it's a push and it'll drop clear but you always want to make sure that you keep, maintain your control on your mag, so just drop the mag as in and out. Now, I haven't liked those because of their thickness and their weight. We've got a traditional AICS steel plate, and they give you a solid lock. He's in there nicely. And again, just pop it out. And then we've got my favorite, which is a mag pull. Oh, but the MDT doesn't like it, Ant. She's not quite. No, it's not, not feeding. It's not hitting the lock. That's really disappointing. Let's 
I wonder if MDT have done that to be a pain. Because mm. we've got multiple of these. They are one of the best feeding magazines you can come across. They're a Teflon coated yeah, follower, right. Right. which means that you don't get any of these hang ups in the magazine. But that's. There we go. Good slapping, you're in there. And that's the thing, you know, firearms and these work tool firearms, we, they are a tool. You don't have to caress them. You, mm. you, yeah, can, yeah. you can use it. Um, but yeah, what that does is it gives Ant access to 10 round magazines in a nice, nice chassis. Lightweight, easy to carry. It's very good, Jack. We can put a multi-point you know, sling on it, but it might just take a little bit of time to get used to these, but if not, we've got yeah. four of these. Beautiful. Now we just got to put the uh, hay going on that and then we'll be complete. Yeah. That is great, Jack. Thank so, you very much for, uh, for converting my new Tika T3X into a more fit for purpose weapon for varmint hunting on Prenti Downs. It's, um, it doesn't take a lot of work. And, you know, at some stage after probably 200 rounds, what you do is you take the scope off and then you just check your tension on your, um, your rail, yep. your optic rail. Yep. The other one is every now and then just to check what the tension is on the ones into the chassis because they can come a little bit loose, but you no, know, she's not held in there by much. No, it's um, when you break it down, you know, the, the, the bolt and the barrel and you know, the, the, the trigger mechanism, and that's about it. Everything yep. else is dressing. Yeah, no, she's gonna be a nice rifle and it'll be fun to put it through its paces. We've got a couple of things which you know might not look so great, you know, that we. Did a little bit of a saw off, but we just grab a non-beaver tail. Yep. Um, but really, that's not going to affect the functionality no, no, at no, all. No, no, no. And it is lightweight. That's a nice rifle. That that's going to do well. And I'm going to love it even more with this uh, with that. This thing, I really like this idea of pulling that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, having, having it and pulling it in yeah. and having that yeah, yeah, full yeah, control. Yeah. Yeah. Now, she's not a long barrel. She's an 18 yeah. inch barrel. Yeah. What, 20. Um, the only thing that would make this nicer, Ant, mm -hmm. is uh, one, a suppressor, and two, if it was self loading. <laughs> <laughs> See how it performs. Yeah. Good stuff. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. You know, my original chassis was heavy. Yeah, right. That, that thing is heavy, heavy shape. Hey, Harv. All right. Family time. Yes, it is. All right, I'll clean up all this, Jack. And if we can just, this is the last thing, just see if we can find that, because I'd like to I've got see. a rail, I've got a stack of rails. They'll probably be in the armory, in a box. Okay. Okay, I'll go and have a look. Yeah. All right, mate. Got it. Sorted. See if that's ever as distance you like. Got. Oh, no. Closer? Yeah, closer. Look at that, you got a black and tan. Black and tan, that's a that's 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 a drink. Kelpie. No, it's a drink. It's called a black and tan. Well, I think we've worked out your rifle's called you know, Ed, have you got your Kelpie? Yeah, yeah, I've got my Kelpie. No, that's my I'm gonna call it black and tan. Black and tan. I like it, Ant. I yeah. reckon this is going to be um, quite the fun. Tell you what, you do have a... But then again, we are looking at something very close. Just punch holes through that door over there. Oh, this is way too easy to hold steady. I oh, know. I need all the help I can get, Jack. You know what they say, mate? It's not the arrow, it's the Indian. 
There's no substitute of recency. Yeah, I like that. Well, Jack, you've excelled yourself yet once again. Thank you for, that's the final product for everyone to see. We'll get all this other stuff out of the road. Thanks everyone for joining Ant and I in the workshop as we put together his new gap. And surely in some point in this video, you might grab his GoPro, I don't know where it is. There's gonna be some rounds punching paper. I'll go for load. Yeah. I reckon, yeah, one of those adjustable height as well for doing this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I do too, yeah, yeah. Like, and also, you know the ones where, remember where the old Mag 58 used to get, I love yeah, that idea. Yeah, the shoulder strap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. Okay. You got ears in? I have ears. Okay, you can, you can fire at will, mate. Alright, I'll action up. Yeah, she kicks a bit. <laughs> Done that. But you won't notice that once you're at, like, yeah, we're shooting from down here, up here. I reckon we almost want to put a riser on that scope. Yep. And bring her up to about there for your eye level. Yep. Because that is a little bit too tucked. Yeah. Up there. Yeah, nice, right? Yeah. You'd, you'd be... All right, let's see where this is hit. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she... F <laughs> that. Beautiful. That's just insane. Yep. Yeah, I, I really like that. Uh, well, yeah, she kicks a little bit. <laughs> but it's not the worst throw weight I fired in terms of recoil. Yeah. It's... But it's got some got some oomph and the trigger's got you know you've got enough of a pad on there for a stock trigger which i like yeah so she the goes stock well triggers what standard yeah so not not a tricked out anything yeah um it'll lighten up with a bit of time yeah i don't want to go in there and start messing with that yeah yeah but you know like the 223 that thing's just spot yep. on every yeah, time yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah so, action's nice. What do you reckon? Oh, I love the action. Yeah, the action's very smooth. Um, but yeah, gee, it gave me a. You, you, you know, you you know you're shooting three away. <laughs> well, Aunt, where have we hit? Right. Okay, we're gonna move up to. Uh... I'll swap mags. What have I got in here? Got, Did you give us a full stack in H? Uh, eight. Okay. Eight. Oh, okay. So that's three. So. Three. So if we do it in threes, I think yeah. that's a good way to go. Or you could do it in fives, whatever. Um, we can just chuck a listen there. In the back. Walk down. Oh, check. Yeah, but you're gonna you're gonna need this, aren't you? Well, I could just shoulder it, and we see what sort of grouping. At 50 if, metres, I shouldn't shake that much. All right, Jack, come on. Or if you want, I can just, I'll lay on the ground, but that'll change our point, but we'll get No, it no, right. no, 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 you stay, you got steadier hands than me. So. I don't know. Well, I do. <laughs> all right. Nothing chambered. Blow? Uh -huh. Mag bin. Yep. I love the pistol grip. It's so much nicer. It is. 
It's just so much easier to carry. Yep. Sure is. Now, all right, Jack, I'm going to go back and get the table and bring it up. One top left, is it? Yeah, I I did left, but then bottom left. No, nah, that's a, that that's our tech screw. Surely, <laughs> I'm not that all over the shop. No, that's around. Oh no, that's your tech screw. No, that, no, that's nothing. Yeah, we're not on target. What is going on, Jack? Fuck it, I reckon I want the zoom to minimum. Let's see what we have. How did how are we so variable? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, usually at this stage I get angry and go to ten. Okay, come on then. <clears throat> you happy? Yep, happy. When you're ready. Okay, top. You're you're high. High middle. Ready? Ready. Yep. Yeah. You're 20 centimetres below it. Ready? Ready. Okay, you're low, yeah, you're halfway down there now. See that line coming across yeah, and you think, but you're spot on, Jack, yeah. You know where it's going. You want to walk back a bit or? Yeah, so I should be on top of the cross now with where I've dialed it to, so we can go back to our 50. Okay. Magged out. Clear. Yeah, that just slips straight forwards. There's no forcing it. Yep. Ears. Ears. Stand by. in time. Cut. Oh, you've got this at five, Jack. Yeah, do you want to wheel her in? I do. That's low and right. Clear. Good. So different shooters, different positions, yeah. everything. Yeah. Glasses v no glasses. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So you reckon you pulled one or um Yeah, I think it's interesting that mine are quite lower than yours. Where were no, you aiming? No, no, were you... Angle. Yeah, okay. I was going for dead center. Okay. So um, all of these yeah. were dead center. No, that's good. This one I pulled. Okay, good. Alright, so we need to um, change our point of impact up by eight. Right, so we've got that thing uh, half dangerous. <laughs> and it's just going to be a process of working out the first 50 rounds through it, giving it a bit of a clean up, and then 
getting fussy about your your sighting because for the first little while yeah rifling shouldn't wear out but it's just getting some of the fouling into the position where you need it to be because you don't want a perfectly clean barrel well your first shot's a cold shot so you've got a cold barrel, so it's not going to be where you sight it because you never sight off the first shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you've got fouling and right. it's sort of ageing. It's like wine, Ant. Ooh. Now. Now, on to another fine red. <laughs> Guns and wine. <laughs>